Today we are here at the Chancellor College University of Malawi and our guest is Dr. Sunduzwayo Madise. He is the Senior Lecturer in Law at the Law Faculty of Chancellor College. Welcome to Cruise 5. Thank you, thank you Joe, for having me. And I believe you are also welcoming us to this oh, university. Yes, oh yes, yes. As we always say, the college that God loved the, the most. The college that God <laughs> loved the most. And someone was asking, why do they say so? I was like, well. Uh, it's just one of those things. It's just one yeah, of those things, yeah. yeah. But, well, I think this college has contributed quite a lot oh, yeah. to the development of the country. Yeah, it has. I so, uh, possibly God loved it. Uh, but whether he loved it most, I think that's up to uh, up debate. Up to God. <laughs> It's up to God to tell us if yeah. he did. When we go to heaven, maybe we might want to ask him about that. Yeah. But for now, they've got uh, there, there are a couple of questions which I'd like to ask you so that we get to know more about okay. you. Um, Madise, not a very new name. Uh, I think there are many Madises around. Yeah. But we are talking to a Sunduzwayo now. Yeah. But who are the other Madises? Tell us more about your family. Uh, so my family is... Um, yes. <laughs> Okay, we are we are all nine in total. Um, the first two passed on, mm. so uh, that was my firstborn sister and my brother. Okay, so we passed on, and then after that, we've got my sister, who's Professor Giovanni Madise. Yes, she's she's one you don't want to mess around. With. I know, right? I know, right? We might want to mess with her. I think on this show, she's the most intelligent <laughs> person I've, I've ever interacted with. Yes, and then after her, there is my sister who is Mrs. Matia. I think she's uh, now president of the National Bar Association of Malawi. Yes. And then there is me. Mm -hmm. And then after me, there is my young brother, who is the just Judge Madise, is in, uh, Justice Madise. Dingiswayo. Dingiswayo Madise. Yes. After that, we've got uh, uh, my sister called Tandiwa Tipa. And then we've got another brother called Mwizaeka Madise. Mm -hmm. he, he's into... Is an accountant, okay. and then well, we had a, a last one, Dosian Madise, but he passed on uh, actually on the 15th of January mm. uh, due to COVID complications. Oh, so so that's that's pretty well my, my family. Yeah. Where have you people grown up? Have you grown up here in Malawi, or you've yeah, been uh, no, sons of the world moving no, no, up no, and no. down? I, uh, actually, I we grew up uh, in essentially Blanda and Rilongwe. Okay. My father was a civil servant. All right. So. He actually worked in Blanda and, and Rilong. Actually, he was banished from Zimba to go to Blanda. Banished? Yeah, he was banished after the, the, the 3rd March uh, uh, uprising. You might, have, you might have heard of his, uh, of the Nkadabe massacre. I heard about those. Yeah, so he was one of those people who were arrested in Zimba. They were shipped out uh, through Nkadabe. And when they were being shipped out, the locals, when they saw that their fellow... Uh, Nyasalanders at that time were being shipped out. They wanted to storm the ship. And because they wanted to storm the ship, they were killed. Ah. So those people were killed trying to rescue people like my father. So when he came here, he was detained at, um, at uh, uh, Kanja's uh, uh, detention center. He was supposed to be flown to Kami, I'm told. Kami, I think somewhere in Ghana or something. Mm -hmm. But the plane had left. And then after he was released, he was banned. But you can never go back to Zimba. You're a troublemaker. Really? So that's how we found ourselves in Blanda. So, so who who, ba who banned him? The, the, the government. The government at that time. W was he a politically active man? I think when in his youth. But I think after that, he never wanted to do anything with politics. <laughs> I can tell you, if you started talking about policy, you just walk away. There was something that used to happen in those days, yeah. uh, and it would make you hate politics yeah. like for the rest I of your life. I think that's the reason why. Yes. One thing I know, though, he never, he was never scared of anyone. So I, I guess he ha he had a way of making himself heard. Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's how we found ourselves in Blanda. So he worked in Blanda and then he worked in Rilongwe. So essentially, we're moving between Blanda and Rilongwe. That's I where see. we grew up. Oh, did, did he ever manage to go back home, though? Your father? Yes, after some time. Yes. After some when time. When things had they, kind they, of yeah, uh, settled yeah, down. But before, even before that, even when we had our own government, he had to get authorization. Just to travel, to travel back yes. to his village. When the ban had been lifted. Um, but after that, yeah, I think uh, when we were now our own country, they yeah. allowed him. And yeah. He was a very interesting man. He went back home every year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, interesting man, yeah. So, very interesting stuff about your father. Um, I hope there's uh, more interesting stuff about you, because we're here to so. know more about I you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I so. Tell us more about your education. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, so, yes. my education is actually... Okay. 
It's actually in albums. And I call them albums. I, I stole the idea from, Mata, from, yeah, from Matafale. And I'll explain <laughs> why. But so I started my primary school at Lingazi Primary School. Okay. And then went to Mpungu. So okay. we were the first people who started Mpungu as a school. Yes. And then after that, my father moved on to Blanta. I think he retired. And I, then I went to school at Misesa. Okay. So from Misesa, he moved on to Dara Primary School. Now it's called Namewa Primary School. Yes. From Namewa Primary School, I was selected uh, from Dara to Chichiri Secondary School. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and maybe I think that's where things start becoming interesting. <laughs> so from Chikin Secondary School, I also like to come here at Chancellor College. Okay. And that's why I call Quimba One. That's my first album. All right. So I read for a Bachelor of Science a degree. My specialty was physics and mathematics. Okay. And after that, I worked as an engineer for MTL. Oh. And then I worked as an engineer for ESCOM. Mm. And after a time, pretty on after five or so years, kind of got disillusioned uh, because interestingly at my graduation I'll tell you there was a person who interviewed me <laughs> and that person was gospel Kazakh. oh really and he asked me oh now you've got your degree are you happy and I said no I'm not yet happy until I get a law degree <laughs> that's a long time ago we're talking of 1991 here. really yeah I think gospel would remember it yes so after that I started uh, uh, going into issues of human rights, law, and labor rights. And then it occurred to me that I needed to come and study law. At that time, I really didn't know what I wanted to study law for. Yes. I wasn't very sure whether I wanted to become a lawyer, but I think I just wanted the knowledge. So I came here to study law, and that's what I call my Kuimba too. Okay. So I studied my law uh, as a mature student, not easy, but you I enjoyed know. myself. Yes. And uh, I passed relatively well. Uh, after that, are you just being modest by saying uh, that? Relatively well. Yeah. <laughs> relatively yeah, well. Relatively. Okay. And then I was offered uh, a job to come and teach. Um, to come and teach here, but before that, I had worked for for the legal aid. Okay. So when I came here, um, I instantly realized that I loved teaching, mm -hmm. and uh, and after that, I was uh, uh, given a chance to go and read for my master's degree at the University of Western Cape, which I call Kuimba Three. Kuimba Three, yes. So I went there to read, and I got. I came out with my degree, I, I should say, it's, in Latin they call it cum laude. I think Which is uh, relatively, is it still relatively uh, good or very, very, very good? <laughs> no, cum laude means distinction. Yes. Yeah. So, it means so it's not relatively... It's uh, not very good. <laughs> <laughs> but so after that, then I realized that I think I needed to go and do a PhD. Before that, I really didn't know that I wanted to uh, do a PhD. And uh, so I wanted to do my PhD. And then when I wanted to do my PhD, I was also... Uh, teaching uh, or tutoring at the university where I went at the University of, of, of Warwick. Okay. And then they told me that if you want to continue this, you need to do another degree. Uh, so a kind of a second master's degree in teaching, mm. which I did. That's yeah. my Quimba 4. Yes. And then eventually I got my PhD. And that's my Quimba 5. So I have five albums. Well, and uh, are we still waiting for Quimba 6? No, I think the PhD is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I don't intend to do another PhD. You don't, go, you don't intend to go and study aerodynamics no, or something no, no, like I, that. I, sometimes I want to do a master's in physics. You see now, you see. We are not done with this. We are <laughs> not done yeah, with this at all. But I think it's too much education for one man. Well, you can never learn too much. I mean... Yeah, um, but if you calculate all these years, you realize that almost half my life has been in education. Then it becomes more like a hobby. Yeah, exactly. You see, so now I think I said, no, I think let me stop and do other. Let me start chewing the money mm. out, out of the, all the work exactly. that I've put in. in this. Exactly. So <laughs> That's our guest today, Dr. Sunduzayo Madise. He is a lecturer at the law faculty here at uh, Chancellor College, and he's going to tell us more about his test of music now which seems to be oh, quite yeah. Catholic, because uh, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. You see, I love all sorts of music. Yes. My best genre, of course, is reggae. Aha. Uh -huh. But you see, I love reggae. Yes. I love uh, the rock. Yes. Hard rock. Yes. I also love a lot of local music. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So my choice of music is kind of spread. Yes. Um, What's our first song going to be? Our first song, I think, will have to be Sagona by Lucius. Oh, yes. I think it's my favorite artist. Tell me about your experience in unionism, because I think um, some people will say, I've heard this name somewhere, and some will remember that it's yeah. in unionism, because you were quite loud and yeah, quite yeah, vocal. Yeah, and, and that uh, got, it got me into trouble. I guess it did. Yeah. I uh, guess it did. So my unionism actually dates back to my secondary school days. <laughs> and I'll tell you the reason why. <laughs> so 
I was supposed to have been the head boy. <laughs> supposed to? Yeah. But you were not. To. So by, the headmaster called me in his office. Yes. And he told me that. Where is this? A teacher of school. Yeah. He says, you are supposed to be the head, the head boy. But, but uh, a few of the teachers have said, you must not be the head boy because you usually side with your fellow students and you usually cause a lot of problems here. But that's the whole idea. I'm supposed to side with yeah, my fellow students. Yeah, but the, the head boy is supposed to kind of met out discipline. Yes. So I said, no, that's okay. And then he said, you can become any prefect that you want. Choose a prefect. So I chose to become entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you won't be fighting yeah, with was, anybody yeah, because I you're also the library <laughs> prefect because I used to do top of the class. Okay. So I, I love the library. Okay. But that taught me something. It taught me that where I stood with people, it yeah. taught me that I stand with the people who are down, uh, uh, downtrodden, yeah. the people who need help. Yes. So when I came here at Chester College, I was very much already... I think into the spirit of unionism. Yes. So here I ran for office. I, I was uh, elected and became the, I think there was director of publications and information for the University of Milan Students Union. Yes. In the second year I ran again and I became, his, they, called, they called us chairman. They couldn't call you president at that time. Oh, there was yes, only I one president. Yes, yes, yes. So the, I was chairman of the University of Milan Students. And after that, the union just took off from me. So when I went to, to ESCOM, uh, I, we started the union. There was no union. <laughs> we started the union called Esco Workers Union. I think it has now changed. And uh, I also became very um, active in organizing other unions. So okay. we actually went around and organized quite a lot of unions. Some of the unions I see around today, we recruited the, the initial people. We told them not to be scared. Yes. We told them that they were fighting for their rights. And I also rose up to become president of the Malay Congress of Trade Unions. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, and then after that, I came back to school, so I had to leave, uh, leave those things. And when I came here, I also served as the president of the Chancellor College uh, Academic Staff Union. Yes. I think for a term, or, I think, or two. Uh, and right now... Taking uh, over from Jessica Yeah, I took over from Jessica Bia, yes. yes. Right now, I'm a Human Rights Commissioner, but I was uh, nominated to go there by the Malay Congress of Trade Unions. Mm -hmm. So it shows that there was something good I did at the, at, at the, at the trade union. But tell me about the, the downside of it, because I think, um, and maybe we're just saying the downside because we, for lack of a better term, um, you do get in bad books, especially with leadership. Yeah, when you, you do. When you yeah. are that you vocal do. and that you strong. You yeah, do. Yeah. But you see, something I read about from my father, yeah. I think, my father read, read, never cared about things like those. So he just wanted to do get the right it, thing. Get, do it the right thing. But my, my, my approach has always been to negotiate. Uh, it's not that I've not led strikes. I have. But I always take a strike as the last resort. Mm -hmm. And I always say there's room to negotiate. Always there's room to negotiate. So I was never scared to, to for example, to go and meet uh, the top person at, at, at the, so for example, when I was here, meet the principal mm -hmm. or meet the vice chancellor or meet the chairman of council. And when I was at, at ESCO, meet the, the, the chief executive officer or like, the top most person and have a one-on-one -on -one discussion and says, where do we disagree? How can we make things better? My view has always been that if you have a happy workforce, they work very, very well. They work with a lot of diligence. They, they are hard workers and then the organization will benefit. So. But yeah, you do get in trouble because when people are doing bad things, you call it out. Yeah, do so do, yeah, do people do. like you genuinely care, and, and excuse me for asking it this way, do you genuinely care about the welfare of the people or there's something hidden in it? You know, like maybe you get some kind of recognition and then when you're walking around, you're like, ah, oh, that's the guy. Oh, okay. you know? so, so, uh, I'll say this. My father came from the village. Mm -hmm. When he was at, his, at Bradley Secondary School, he told me a story. He came there with shorts. Yes. That's all. And one, one, a short and his shirt. That's all. And he, when he went there, his name, his name then was Pangazinda. When he went to the school, the school headmaster said, you can't come here in shorts. shorts yeah. You can't come here without shoes, without a shirt. That's my father. And then he, told, he gave him a pair of, sh of, of trousers a shirt and shoes and my father always said they were too big for me but they were the most beautiful shoes i've ever worn yes so my father came from nowhere yeah we grew up in a family where we we always didn't have enough yeah uh, i would be lying to say my father was poor 
but he wasn't rich either. So we grew up with humble, in humble beginnings, in humble homestead. So, and that's how I grew up. Mm -hmm. I was never rich. I never had things when I was a student or whatever it is. If I have things now, it's because I've worked for them. Yes. So, yeah, you see, I, on the political, on the world political continuum, I start on the left. Okay. Much more with the socialist than the capitalist. Yes. Because I'm a unionist. So, no, I believe in it. I am a unionist at heart. And I will always, no matter what I become, I will always side with the, with the work. I will always side with the person down there. That's well, why. That's quite comforting then, I guess. Uh, because sometimes one is tempted to think there's a hidden um, agenda behind the whole thing. For, uh, in the union is very difficult because most people don't like you in the union. So it's, you don't. It's a, it's a bad, it you, might, be, you, you might get kicked out. Yeah, it might be a bad route to, to, to get to start off. <laughs> but uh, the only thing that sometimes I, I, I see is I meet people who I work, for example, at Esco, and they would say, do you remember me? I said, no, I don't. I, I've grown quite old now. And then they would remind me what we're able to achieve. And yes. when they do that, oh, oh my, I feel like I'm in heaven. Exactly. And I think that's all you can... It's you gratifying. Can it is gratifying. That's our guest today, Dr. Sundu Zwayo Madise, our second song. Our second song uh, is Mwayanena. Uh, By? Yeah, Grace Chinga Mofati. Powerful uh, Grace Chinga. artist, that one. It Goodness is because uh, uh, there's a reason why I, I chose that song. Um, when I was doing my Kuimba 4 and 5, yes. I struggled sleeping. So I discovered that song, and it was the song that would make me go to sleep. I kid you not. You had demons in you. Not demons. The school was the demon. You had demons because in you. You see, when you're doing especially a PhD, your, your life changes. Mm -hmm. you, 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 sometimes I'll wake up at 10 a.m. <laughs> and then I'll wake up until 2, 3 a.m. Your day gets totally gets warped. Total, yeah. yeah. Because sometimes you're in the zone. And when you're in the zone, you have to deliver. You want to make the most of yeah. it. Sometimes things just don't work. So I found that song. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll leave it playing. And then it would quickly get, get me to sleep. So it's, it's a song that is very close to my heart. I hope it doesn't get you to sleep, though. Yeah. Because we still so. want you to hang around uh, <laughs> and hear more about our guest today, Dr. Sundu Zayu Madise, Grace uh, Chinga with Mwainera. In those albums, um, I don't know where your uh, interest in sports features. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a single or something. Okay, so when I was a student here, I was at Chester College my, doing my Quimba one. I used to play a lot of basketball. Okay. That's my closest I have gone to contact sport. <laughs> when I was at Dow Primary School, I know I was the substitute goalkeeper at our other 12 team. <laughs> and you made, your, you made your team lose all the time? No, I, I never had a chance to play. <laughs> but when I was doing my Quimba two, I know I was the goalkeeper for our law class. <laughs> and we managed to do well. Okay. But that's the closest I can get to sports. Now I'll tell you how I became a sports administrator by accident. By accident? Yes. It was because I would say maybe our success in the union. Yes. That a few people when I was at ESCO mm -hmm. contacted me and says, look, you're doing very well in the union. Can you help us with the football team? Uh -huh. So there's always somebody noticing what you're yeah. doing anyway. And I said, I'm, I'm too busy. I can't combine this. Yeah. And then they, they kind of convinced me, said, what do you have to lose? So I went there, and then I had a person who was also in the union called Azikiwe Musambewe. Mm -hmm. We were together in the union, mm -hmm. and he, I, he agreed he was going to be my team manager. Mm -hmm. uh, we enjoyed ourselves, man. Yes. We recruited some of our best players, yeah. with people like Peter Mponda, Emmanuel Chipatala, and then we had great coaches like Yasin Osman, uh, Dean Pinto. It was a good team, and we built that team. We had uh, also a person called Charles Twalibu, who had inherited the team when it came from Ilonga. Mm -hmm. I remember we won so many things, the team name changed from ESCOM to Super ESCOM. Wow. Then, during then, with uh, two colleagues of mine, uh, Henry Chibo and Gaston Mwenopembe, one were having, I think, one called one somewhere. <laughs> we, we kind of pondered the thinking of starting a league okay. for our clubs. Because at that time, it was still part of uh, a national league. But part of the blood is this football league. Okay. That was what it was at that time. Yes. So we, we mooted the idea and used the South African model. Mm -hmm. So we, we f mooted the idea of forming a, a Premier League, but we already had a Premier League okay. and in the, in the blended District Football League. So we thought of creating a Super League. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we, we agreed and we talked to a few people i think we had a person called major jumbo mm -hmm. i don't know whether he's still alive then we had professor Han Tenje, mm -hmm. who was with the university yes and then i know i remember we went and it was kind of clandestine operations the football association didn't like it at that time so we went and met people like mr yakamera who was the chairman of wanderers mm -hmm. People like uh, Rashid Nemba, who was the chairman of Bullets, and we convinced them. And once we convinced them, we launched what was called the Sulam Mati Choice Bonanza. And that was the start. So that's how we started the Super League of Malawi. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was his first president. Wow. And that's really how I got interested in football. And after that, I've always loved sports and sports administration. I would say I'm the only Malawian, I think I know, or the first person I know, who has ever chaired two clubs. Mm -hmm. So I chaired ESCO, football club, in the Super League. And I've also chaired Bullets in the Super League. So I think I've not done too badly. Not too bad at all. In fact, even at the Football Association of Malawi, you rose to the position of vice president. Yeah, I was vice president. Uh, I was vice president uh, because I was president of Sulam. So I was uh, uh, invited to go there. I think there was a vacancy, a casual vacancy. Okay. So I did rise there. Although I did serve in farm for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, those are not uh, memos. I think it is my tenure at the Super League that, to me, is much more interesting. When I see the Super League now, yes. I always feel good. Yes, sir. Well, I was part, I was of, part of this. Uh, yes, yeah, exactly. And this is something that came from, like I said, a few cord cord words. Exactly. Yeah. I, well, I guess the secret lies under that bottle, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 at the yeah. bottom of the bottle, yeah. there's a lot of wisdom, as they say, <laughs> yeah. in wine. Uh, tell me about the money that you stole. Uh, as the vice president of the Football Association actually, of Malawi. <laughs> no, actually, I, thought, I don't know whether I was vice president or I was the uh, uh, general secretary. Yes. Actually, I never stole anything. Never. Not even a cent. Well, you took, you were supposed to give no, someone no, 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 and no, then you kept a little bit. No, no, uh, this is what had happened. We, we, had, there was, we had won a, um, we were paired against, against South Africa. Yes. So, at that time, we w people wanted to bid for hosting rights. Yes. Uh, TV rights. So I think there was a competition between South African Broadcasting Corporation. Ah, I've forgotten the other one. They used to, to be the, the TV uh, rice holders for Kosafa. Yes. I've just forgotten the name. It's, yeah. it's quite some time. So we went for a discussion with them. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem, I always call it the problem, is that when we went there, they advanced us some money. Okay? They advanced us some money, uh, which we bought equipment. Mm -hmm. And the equipment came here. Now, what happened was that when they wanted to give us the money, at first they wanted to then remit the whole amount of money. And then they said, no, 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 we, we forgot to reduce by such, such amount. So we have to reduce that amount. So they got the money back. And, uh, but then South African Broadcasting Corporation are the ones who said, oh, no, no, if you have given it to, to our colleagues, it means something has gone wrong. Because the issue is that if I had stolen the money, so... It would have been stupid for me to steal the money and then use the same money to buy equipment mm -hmm. because the equipment was there at football social Malawi. and just to show you that um if uh, if that was the problem i'll never have come back to football no you would i mean uh, no, that, that, that's a different story how? altogether uh because i mean uh, how would in, I have in those to in those days no, i would not have come back in to those days it was alleged that you were actually involved in, I, I, there's that issue of the football um, uh, beaming rights and then the issue of bribing a referee to make sure that the flames win uh, uh, you remember that was one of uh, the yeah, issues no, that came up that was crap they never even went far with that the point is sometimes you're just good with people so there were some re referees that came and I, I, I didn't fully understand it because you're supposed to take care of the referees. You're supposed to give them a vehicle. They should go around. And this, I know this particular referee wanted to go out in the, in the night. Yeah. So I remember assigning one of the referees, local referees, to say, can you take him around? Uh, and I didn't fully understand what the issue was all about. Uh, but I think that issue never even went far. Uh, because when the issue went to court, it didn't go far. But this is the issue. The issues went to court. Uh, the court found that I was in the wrong. You know, sometimes as a lawyer, this is what I can tell you. Mm -hmm. The fact that you've been found guilty doesn't mean you're guilty. And the, fine, the fact that you've been acquitted doesn't mean you're, 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 you're not right. guilty. No. But sometimes the fact that you've been found guilty could also mean that you are guilty. Yes. Oh, yeah, it would. But, so, I mean. So I, but this is the point. When it happened, I, I, I made a decision that says, between me and God, am I, have I done anything wrong? 
And I looked at my heart and said, no, I haven't done anything wrong. It's what it was called a technical conviction. So if certain things are not right, uh, and even if you try to give an explanation, it's a little bit difficult. And the system then set out to make sure they got me out of football. And so now, that's the issue that I wanted to get. What was happening? What, from your understanding, I'll be what honest happened? with you, a lot of elements of tribalism. Okay. There was a minister who told me in my face. There was another you? time, I'll tell you what, a minister so was sitting to me, he didn't know where I come from. Because sometimes my teacher can be from, uh, like, a, sometimes I speak like, yeah, I'm from Cholo, the time I speak like I'm from Blantai or Lilongwe. I just pick up an accent. Yeah. And this minister was sitting next to me and he was complaining that the national team was full of people from a particular regional district. And he was telling me. And I said, Crap, I what's am. wrong with this guy? But... Yeah, this, this is politics, politics in football. It's, it's cutthroat, it's serious. But you see, in life, those are what I call uh, critical junctures. Sometimes you go in this direction and something uh, blocks you. What do you do? Do you give up? No. So at that time, I said, okay, uh, okay, I'll, I'll stop doing this. Let me do something else. But, but this is the point. I wanted to do something else. I, wanted, I left football. I was asked, I mean, to come back into football by bullets. Okay. To become their chairman. Now, I don't think Bullets people are stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, either they thought I was framed mm -hmm. or they saw something through me. Okay. Uh, so they gave me an opportunity. I think I went back to, to run football. It's one of those things that didn't happen. I don't think I would have come to study law. Okay, all right. I don't think I would have come to study law. So but your conscience is clear that no, nothing no. Yes. untoward no, happened. No. Absolutely clear. Very clear. That's our guest today on Cruise yeah, 5. Yeah. That's our guest today on Cruise 5, Dr. Sunduzwayo Madise. Third song. My third song... Not the one that sends you to sleep when you're feeling no, no, to no, sleep starting a PhD. Doesn't. So my third song <laughs> would have to be my tribute to the person who created the albums. Yes. Young and Uncle So Everson Matafari. Everson Matafari. He are you, are, are you a big fan of him? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. In my spare time, I used to produce music <laughs> and i'll be i'm not, I'm not going to kill you do you sing so no I, i'm <laughs> very bad at singing <laughs> well but your voice sounds like you could sing i think so there was a time i was uh, i used to be in the choir at church but i think that's the closest so i'll tell you my production was on post-production and uh, electronic mastering okay so i'll tell you this <laughs> two people came to me and asked me if if i could do so i used to do discs and remaster music for people okay. so there were Patrick Ankwatira, yeah. and I think Petrus, is it Petrus Mazunda, Peter Mazunda. Peter Mazunda. And they said, there's this young chap from, from, uh, from Chileka. Yes. Uh, can, can, can you do something about him? Can you produce his, can you remaster his work? And they said, let me listen to what you have. And usually at that time, the music, most of it was either in tapes or CDs were just coming. He's one of the artists where I listened for the first song and, until the end. Yes. And then I said, can you call him? Yeah. So this young man comes to my house. He's very small. Yeah. He looks bemused. Yeah. And we have a chat. And yeah. I said, how do you want me to create your music? How do you want me to remaster your music? Yeah. How do you want it to sound? Which levels do you want to come up? Because it's been recorded already. Yeah. And then I took time to design the sleeve for the CD. Ah. It took me the long time. It took me, I think, about three days. Young and it, is, it was because my Everson was so particular about what he wanted, where, which color. So the original sleeve of the CD, I designed it. Really? Those CDs, I made them. Wow. That cover, I made it. That was my part of my past life. I have also done it for other upcoming artists at that time. Uh, yeah, I have done it. I think with Wycliffe Chimwanda, I did some. Yeah. I also did some from this, also this chap from, uh, from Chileka, Antony Macondesa, and a few other people. So... It's going to be Yangan and Kobe Yangan and Kobe Edison Matafari. Edison Matafari. Dr. Madise, you were tried, convicted, and slapped with a suspended sentence. And uh, listening to you talk, you seem to acknowledge that it's around this time that things kind of took a turn in your life. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what was going on in your mind at this time and how it made you sit back and say, goodness gracious, what's going on now? I yeah, need no, to do I'll something. tell you what, by that time, I had already gone past it. Okay. I'd already decided, so I had already made plans for my life that if things don't go right, 
uh, this is what I, I'm likely to do. I didn't think I, essentially that I was going to, 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 to study law. Okay. But you see, I'd gone through quite a lot up to that time. Right. Some of my own friends had kind of betrayed me. And you get to know these things, <laughs> you know. And so it was tough. And most of them were in football. And that was also, I think, one of the reasons why at that time I said, I don't want anything to do with football. But yes, I do make a turn. And I remember, I went to court in the morning, went to court in the morning. Uh, the court actually uh, gave, g uh, put out a fine, I think, and then suspended the other one. And then uh, in, after, in the afternoon, I went to watch football. And that was the decision. I said, I'm not going to be put down. I'm not going to accept anything one to put me down. I remember going there, a few people were a little bit surprised to they see are like, me. Um, what is he doing uh, here? Yeah, like a forest gump like kind of situation. I don't want to sit next yeah. to you. But I said, I'm not going to care about what people are saying. Because at that time, I said, with me and my God, I'm clear. And to me, I think being at peace with yourself is much more important. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if my conscience was clear and my God... I think if, if, if I was older, I don't think I would be here. I think somewhere God stood up with me and says, look, my ch child, let's walk on a different route. So, so yeah, it was, a, it was a critical juncture in my life. I made a change. And, but I had a lot of support, I should be honest, okay. from my family All right. and a lot of friends. Okay. A lot, I had a lot of support. Okay. So, yeah, I think that also helped me. So, there's a certain point in your life where you seem to have just literally fallen off the face of the earth and... Uh, until you resurfaced as a as a, I think as it's a because I, I decided to come and study. <laughs> yes. So wh what was happening in between? Wh wh what did you do? What else did you get? Okay. This no, I, 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 I was uh, I became president of my Congress of Trade Unions. So I still was I was still busy with my union work. Okay. Uh, but yeah, study can also keep you a little bit busy. All right. And uh, I also used to do a lot of labor consulting. Uh, so I used to help people who had been fired, but who didn't have money, to to take cases okay. on their own. So I'll just do it for them. I'll not charge them anything. Okay. So I had an organization called Labor Resources Center. We'll be asking for people for, for or donors for money. But essentially, we were helping people who had been uh, dismissed. So yeah, at that time, I kind of uh, played a rock profile. But even at that time, I was chairman of Bullets. Yes. When I was studying here, yeah. I was chairman of Bullets. So it wasn't like I had really gone quite. So you, I mean, I you was chairman of Bullets twice. You, you you seem to be you're stuck in sports um, yeah, uh, yeah, and in yeah, football because yeah, yeah. uh, you you are now uh, uh, the Chairman the board chairperson of, of, of uh, the the sports council. I just love sports. I'm a sport. I'm a sportsman at heart. I'm gonna be very good with my body. The only other stop sports I'll say is when I was young, I you know would go to the mountain and do a little bit of uh, kung fu and and jiu <laughs> And I, that's something I still do. You get do. a belt. Yeah, I, I don't have a belt. I didn't go for testing, but I still do. I have a small gym at my house. Okay. I still pump the uh, iron. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes you get busy with life. But yeah, I've always been captivated with sports. And I think now I'm stuck in force, uh, sports administration. Yeah. So the decision to study law now, tell me, uh, because obviously um, earlier on it was more like just a fantasy yeah. thought. But then you said, okay, I'm going back to uni. And I, I mean, I have always, I've always marveled at this. You had everything figured out. Yeah. You've been to college, yeah. you've done your four years, yeah. you could get a job and so on and so forth. You're into sports. And then you say you literally drop everything yeah. and you go back to college. It was a risk. Yeah, it was a risk. Um, the reason was essentially, maybe I wanted to say I can do it. Yes. But I think it was because when I was doing this, this work as a labor resources uh, counselor, where I would counsel people and help people, I would get stuck if I wanted to do certain things. Okay. So, for example, I would go into the industrial relations court and help them because that court allows nine lawyers. But sometimes I would write a letter to, to a, a, an organization complaining that this person has been fired and then they would get their lawyer to respond. And then they would be talking about language and say, what are they saying? I have yeah. to go to a dictionary to read yeah, it and yeah, all those yeah. things. And then I became intrigued to say, maybe I need to understand what are these people saying. Sometimes I'll go to the industrial relations court and help people. And then there'll be a lawyer, and then they'll be sounding very lawyerish, legal English <laughs> and everything. And they would also t be trying to, to put me down. Yes, exactly. He's yeah. not a lawyer. Exactly. Right? So I think, to say the truth, I think that is what made me say, let me go back uh, and study law. And especially let me, so that I can help these people uh, much better. And also because sometimes we'll be stuck where, if the matter was going to the high court, 
So I, I'd have to ask a few people to help. And I remember at that time there were people like Mr. Kankwas, Joseph Kankwas. He would take our cases without charging any. Yeah, yeah. Very good people. Yeah. So I said, let me also do it so that I can help these people. So my real reason was, was essentially that I was still hoping I would get my law degree, go back, and continue helping the people. And you did. never did. I never did. But Here I, you are stuck. No, no, but I st the organization still continued. I still helped people. But I went back and worked at the, uh, the Legal Aid Bureau. And the reason I went there was specific for that, mm -hmm. to give back to my country. I must be honest, my first degree, I had paid nothing. Mm -hmm. The government of Malawi sponsored me. Mm -hmm. They not only sponsored my degree, they even gave me an allowance. Ah. Yeah, at that time, they, only, they used to give us allowance. Don't yes. laugh. I think it was 12 quiet. Ha, ha, ha. But don't laugh. They don't, they oh, don't I'm sorry. I already laughed. Set it up as, <laughs> as tax. It was a lot of money. It was a lot of money. I never needed any money from my parents. Yes. It was not, you could get a girlfriend. Yes. And, and still, yeah, take her out to places with that money. So don't <laughs> laugh. But you see, even for the second degree, I came as a mature student. I paid a slightly more fees, which my sister helped me to pay. But even the fees that I was paying was still subsidized. So I said, let me give something back okay. to, 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 to my country, to the government. So I went back to the legal aid, and I worked there, okay, maybe six, about six, seven months, because I came here. But the reason I went there was because I said, let me give something okay. back to the All government. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you came back here, and you've risen to the position of uh, dean of law. I was, yeah, I was um, dean of law, yeah. Yes, yes, uh, that, 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 that's quite impressive indeed. But what I think is not very impressive is what kind of lawyers are we are we producing at this oh, university? Oh, great, great lawyers. No, no I, we wouldn't, are. I, I wouldn't say so. The great lawyers. No, I mean like the, they're, they're, they're some of the best thieves in the country. No, actually, no. Excuse I, my I, French. No, 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 I'll, I'll be honest with you. We have thieves in Malawi. We and have, lawyers are some of them. They're, they're Malawians. You are, you are training them here. Yeah, but uh, also people who are not lawyers. Are <laughs> so the point I'm trying to say is that, unfortunately, when a person like a lawyer try, does something, it gets amplified. Uh, and the same thing as accountants. But I'll tell you, you've got accountants, you've got doctors, you've got uh, procurement people, you've got journalists, you've got uh, people who do nothing, who steal. So, but I'll tell you what, the what? lawyers we train here, what? top notch. <laughs> they, top notch. <laughs> but you see, in the old days, you have a class of five, yes. ten lawyers. Yes. Very few. Mm -hmm. If one or two were errant lawyers, you'd quickly know them. Nowadays, our class is average of 60. Mm -hmm. So it's so quite a large class. It's quite a large class. Yeah. And out of 60, you don't expect all of them. And it's 59, maybe. Just one bad apple. Yeah, <laughs> but you see, when that bad apple does something wrong, it gets amplified. I guess so. So I would still say our lawyers are top notch. Well, uh, what, what else do you expect to hear from uh, someone who's been a dean of, uh, of law? Uh, but some people have said, and I, I don't know, uh, it gets me a little bit desperate, that the setup in Malawi is such that it's a bit difficult because it's one institution that is uh, producing all these lawyers. And it becomes a bit difficult when a lawyer, um, 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 an errant lawyer uh, as, as it is, uh, has to face the law as it were. Yeah, I think you're Cause, right. Yeah, because it's you are facing your old yeah. classmates and or your lecturers, and it's 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 such a peculiar situation. No, it is. You're right. I think although things have changed now, we've got a new law, which allows uh, the institutions to to establish law schools. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they have to follow uh, some kind of um, uh, accreditation uh, yeah, processes. accreditation processes. We are also allowing lawyers who have been or students who have been trained outside to come and sit for the bar exam after going through. Uh, training here so the law has changed but I do agree with what you're saying that more or less most of the lawyers kind of know each other and you know sometimes it's a little bit difficult to hang your your colleague to dry mm. that said I am aware that the, the, the law society the, the attorney general the solicitor general and all those people who are involved in the discipline issues have been disciplining lawyers but you see the point is that most of the discipline is done internally and I know that uh, people would want maybe to know what is, is happening. Well, I wouldn't want to know what's yeah, happening. Yeah, but the problem is sometimes <laughs> some of these issues can be contentious. If you bring them out and then the person is found to have been in the, not in the wrong, yes, yes. they might see you because yeah. you've kind of damaged their reputation. Okay. So it's challenging, but I hear you. And I think it would be naive for me to say that those things don't happen. Yes. Those concerns are there. I think the law society is trying very hard to ensure that uh, that is kind of improved. But I hear you. But I think you have to understand the position I'm in. 
as, as a lecturer of law, it's going to be very difficult for me to start dissing my own students. I wish you did, though. I mean, yeah, you, you've, you've been known to speak your mind. I, uh, no, I do. But when I meet them... Yeah, you're not, you're not speaking your mind. Because, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a public <laughs> TV. <laughs> but when I meet them, I tell them, I tell them, I said, look, this is not right what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, but... I, yeah, I think you have to understand it. the shoes are being. Uh, well, um, he, he is in a, a very, very awkward position now. Uh, so maybe we can't expect to get much out of him. Uh, that's our guest today, Dr. Sunuzayo. But this, uh, he is a law lecturer. He's been the dean of the law faculty here at Chancellor College. And he's going to tell us his fourth song. Okay, so my fourth song would have to be Didi by Faith Monster. Yes. <laughs> I hear you mention the word God, you know, the Lord this and that. Are, are, you, are you a religious man? I'm a Christian. I don't think I'm very religious. I must be honest <laughs> with you. The reason is sometimes I question things. I know, I know when I do that, my priests don't like it. My friends who are very religious don't like it. But I always say God gave us the brain for a reason. I guess it's... Um there's a conspiracy to stop people from thinking too much. Uh, uh, and people say, you're questioning God. If God didn't want us to question, he would not have given us a brand. Well, I guess you're not supposed to go beyond a certain No. Way. If God, the way I know, I know God, I understand God. God is so huge, you can never get close to him. Mm. So even you're questioning, God laughs at you. So I, I always get amazed when people want to defend God. Who are you to defend God? You and me were nothing. No, but maybe their understanding is much, much better than yours. Uh, no, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Everyone who says that is lying. We all don't know. That's the truth. Do you go to church, though? I go to church religiously. I haven't been going to church, going to church much with the COVID. Of course, of course. But before that... You would go to church. Oh, I've never but you'd be Sunday. questioning everything that the preacher is saying, no, I'm sure. No, I'll be you getting like, it. I don't think that's no, true. No, I'll be getting it. But sometimes, yeah, he, he reads a verse, and I know that that the context is different and the preach is different. I do that because I studied Bible knowledge in secondary school. Okay. So I know, I, I read the Bible. Yeah. We studied it as, as, as in class. And I also have co colleagues of mine who are philosophers and theologists. Yeah. So they, they, they will explain to me certain things. No, but I don't go to church to question. I go to church to be given food, spiritual food. And sometimes you go to church, you, you have a sermon that just touches your heart. Mm -hmm. Or you have an interpretation of the Bible which you've never known or heard. Yeah. So, yo, I go there. So you believe in, uh, in God, in Jesus, oh, and the supernatural uh, creature somewhere uh, that... I believe, I believe in supernatural creatures. I believe in that, but I also believe in science. Okay. Remember my first degree was physics in science. Exactly. And my study of physics questions some of the things people believe. <laughs> because I've studied physics. Okay. Uh, and I know what's out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I know, for example, that this Earth is not the center of the universe. Okay. Even of our own solar system, it's the sun. Yes. These are basic things. Mm -hmm. But from a person who's very religious, they will not understand it because they'll think you're trying to undermine the Earth. Okay. I don't oh, think that's what it is. The power of the creator. Yeah. I've always had a view that evolution was not the way we look at it. It was much more complicated. Okay. And so my understanding is that religion and science don't have to be in conflict. Well, that, that, that's an age-old uh, debate, but I guess it looks but, like the meeting point is, is far from, 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 from near because, uh, as you're saying, um, somehow, and I know it's a debatable issue, uh, people say you should not question a lot of things in religion, yeah, but question. science thrives on questioning things. Yeah. Why, does the, why does this happen this yeah. way and so on and so on? And there are things that science can't explain. Exactly. And to me, that's where... Uh, religion or God comes in okay. where you can't fully explain things right. where even your thinking comes to a stop All right. but to, the problem I have is for, for people to say science is against God no that's not true okay. yes there are other scientists who are against God but I've always I've never had problems trying to reconcile them mm -hmm. like I said I've always looked at evolution as part and parcel mm -hmm. of creation okay so it's something that uh, I know I always get in trouble with most people. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are many things that we could have talked about. Um, but quick, quick one, the issue of uh, injunctions and things like that, especially where uh, it seems to come in conflict with national development. Yeah. Um, I, I remember the former president, Professor 
Bingo Omtarika was really, really frustrated yeah. about this, and he talked about mercenary lawyers and yeah. things like that. And you, you know, the Red Star campaign yeah. that couldn't yeah. Uh, yeah. start because of uh, the thin plastics yeah. ban of thin plastics. What, what's your take on, on such? My thing? take is that it's the law, and if you want to change the law, change the law. Don't blame the lawyers. So, we've got a law in this country where people have a right to challenge things. You cannot take away that right. But this is the problem. And this is something that I've heard the current Attorney General putting a lot of emphasis. We have had a situation where normally government will not challenge most of these things. So I'll go and get an injunction as a lawyer. If the other side doesn't challenge it, what do you expect? So this is the way an injunction works. Normally an injunction is made ex parte. Ex parte means the court only hears from one side. Okay. So I'll go to the court. And I will explain things to the court. And what the court will be deciding that if this is true, mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. if this is true, then this person is going to suffer. So let's grant an injunction. The idea is the court gives an injunction. You're supposed to come back to, to, come back to what is called an inter partes application. All sides come. And then the court hears all the sides now. Uh -huh. But if the other side doesn't even turn up, or when it turns up, it's very prepared, ill prepared. Or not prepared at all then the court still listens to one side so this is where we have to be a little bit uh, uh, I think uh, clear that we need for example against government the government must beef up that on the chambers we need a lot of lawyers we need to have a situation where you have lawyers maybe in every district so for example if I go and apply for an injunction here at the Zomba High Court the attorney general is in wrong mm -hmm. so they'll not know about it until maybe two three weeks mm -hmm. But if they were here, they would know about it. They would know about the local situation, and then they would prepare. Having said that, yes, sometimes some of the injunctions ought not to be granted. Yes. So I think this is an issue that is concerning even to the legal profession. Yes. But you're not going to blame lawyers for taking advantage of some loopholes, are you? Because that's what lawyers do. Uh, they win cases by looking at opportunities to say, how can I get the best for my client? But I hear you. Uh, that sometimes we have had injunctions where even us as lawyers, you, you just shake your head or just open your eyes Why this is, what is happening here? But I think it's something that we can work on. We have now appointed, the, the president has appointed a lot of judges. I think he appointed 12 new yeah. judges. Uh -huh. So hop, hopefully this will change things. We're going to have much more justice going on. The problem is not the injunction. The problem is that after the injunction, what happens? What happens? If somebody just lets it slide, and normally there'll be a case what happens to the case so average period of of a case or artist before the new judges was around five years mm -hmm. it's too long it's too long others may be fast others may be long but average is about five years uh, who wants to litigate for five years yeah, by the time you're finishing the client may be dead yeah the, the lawyer may be dead or whatever it is so we need to to speed up our our justice uh, system uh having new judges helps but also lawyers need to be vigilant. But now we also have a new system where the courts are a little bit much more hands-on. Mm -hmm. So the rules have now changed. It will take a little bit of time. But yes, I hear you. It's something that even as, as lawyers, we get worried. The president surrendering his powers and, you know, um, it's, it's been a, a, a podium talk for quite some yeah. time. Do, do you see the current president doing that? Doesn't seem to be... I think he's interested. The problem is the system. He cannot just say, I've given up my powers. The law says you shall be vice chancellor. You shall be, sorry, chancellor of the University of Malawi. Yes. The law says so. You cannot say, I will not be chancellor. <laughs> You'll be contravening. You'll be contravening the law. <laughs> so we need to change the law. I have written a small paper on this. Okay. And my argument is that actually the president doesn't have a lot of powers. They don't? They don't. The problem we have is not powers. It's abuse of power. Abuse of power. That's our problem. Most of the decisions that we have complained about, the president doesn't even have those powers at all. That's where the problem is. That's why people think, oh, the president is doing this, the president is doing that. If you actually go into the law, you realize that some of the things, the president doesn't have those powers. But there are certain powers that, I'm, in my view, the president doesn't need it to have. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you could easily change the law so that the president doesn't have to be chancellor of any university. Or he could just be chancellor of one university. For example, appointing chiefs, paramount chiefs, senior chiefs. Some chiefs, come on. The president can let go of those powers, but it has to be in the law. Appointing maybe the SCB director, my view is that should be done by someone else. Um, 
maybe appointing commissioners of the electoral commission. Maybe we could have an independent uh, board that does that. Those are the powers. The rest of the powers are there because the president has to do it. It's not only here in Malawi. For example, appointing judges, the whole world, mm -hmm. presidents do that. Uh, appointing ministers, whatever, the president does that. If you actually see the, the powers of the president, what he actually has, you realize they're not as many as people think. Is that so? It's the abuse of power, uh, which we have been seeing around, especially in the past. That has made people to say, reduce the powers. Most of the powers are not there. Well, I've always meant to believe that the president has too much power. No. That's why they always talk about, oh, no, I will uh, no. sit some that's of why, powers. That's why people can challenge the president in the, in the exercise of his powers. Mm -hmm. The president's power, the ones that have the executive powers, they're in the Constitution. Some of them, in a few acts, I'll challenge you, go into the Constitution, you'll find that they're not as expansive as people think. But we have heard, for example, in the past, where it says the president has appointed chief executive officer. The president can't do that. He doesn't have the power. Or the president has fired. No, the president doesn't have that power. So what we're, what we're seeing is that a situation where presidents have been appropriating power to themselves, uh, which, which should not. Have, yeah. Which they never had. So they don't even have to give... Um, they no, don't even what have are to you going to give out when you don't have it? <laughs> you cannot give that which you don't have. But the, yes, I do agree there are some powers that have to be shed off. Yes. They will not make any difference. In fact, they will just make the president have less headache. Can you imagine the issue of chiefs? I mean, it's, 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 it's hectic. A, it's, a, it's a hot potato. I think the president would be better left off uh, doing other things. So, well, I don't want to drag you into politics because you said um, you hinted that you don't intend to do politics. I comment on co politics. You law. do comment oh, on yeah. politics quite a lot. Actually, your Facebook which page is very law. active. Which yeah. has to do with law. Now, so, uh, politics related to law. Sticking yeah. to issues of law, um, I have been monitoring what's happening uh, in the country and also following quite a lot what's happening, especially on social media. Yeah. Um, the Tonse government uh, got into power with the promise to change things. Yeah. And you get a feeling of desperation among people yeah. that things are not changing as fast as... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Quickly, do you think things are changing as fast as they should? No, I think that they, they don't change much faster. But the president is kind of hamstrung. And I'm saying that because there are things he can do, there are things he can't do, and there are things he needs to take time. So the things that like people people are saying, fire that person. Yeah, but it's not just change that thing. Not under our law, you cannot do that unless, as Malawians, we're prepared to pay billions in compensations to these people. So you can't fire anyone at any time. Pay them off. So I'll give an example. This is what happened. Most of these people had their contracts renewed around June, May. They're about just before the election. Yes. So they have it's up. Most of them have three-year contracts or four-year contracts. You cannot just fire them because those contracts were validly renewed. There could have been issues around it. So if you're, the best way to fire them is either find something wrong with them or give, pay them off. So if we had a full bag of money, <laughs> I think that would be the uh, solution. I think most of us who are not politicians, that's what we would think. Just fire them. Yeah. Fire them. Yeah. But you need to have money because you need to pay them. We must not, not uh, these cases will go to court. Two, three years, they'll come back. Can you imagine what would happen two, three years, or the, just before the elections, the next elections? And then there's a newspaper article, headlines, of government to pay 20 billion because of unfair dismissals. The people have forgotten that we they were, were the ones who were pushing yes. for that. So the president is, 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 has to make a decision, what is called the devil's alternative. Whichever decision he makes, it's not going to please everyone. There'll be a section who are not happy. But the other thing to consider is that some of these people we call quadrants, they, they may have been doing things because they were either scared of their jobs, but they're also Malawians. Mm -hmm. So as a president, he, he's also the father of the country, of the nation. So he has to kind of unite the country. It's not easy for him. Yes, we could do it better. And I think things are happening. If you check what is happening, things are happening. But I think I'll be a little bit... Uh, worried as a lawyer, if, if for example, uh, OPC started churning out dismissal termination letters every week, I think that's what people want. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it could be done. Of course, there's sometimes I say maybe he should do this, but then the lawyer in me sometimes tells me, wait a minute. And I'm also a human rights activist. I'm a commissioner of the Malawi Human Rights Commission. Hmm. So if I have to say, you can't just do this, you can't do this. So yeah, the president is between a rock and a hard place. 
it could be done better. But I think sometimes when he speaks, you hear the frustration in his voice. Yes. But I think let's give him time. But then, um, Fundis, I guess this is what they call a catch to two situation. Yeah. Uh, you 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 are a follower of reggae music, and Bob Marley says, "Strike the iron what while the." Yeah, that's that, that's what that's what you do. Yeah, uh, but you, and, you don't uh, do that in democracy. <laughs> you know, we chose in 1994, and this is where people sometimes forget the things they want the president to do are the things we were doing pre 1994. Okay, when and we, we paid had, dearly for them. Yeah, and we paid dearly. And I don't think President Chakwera would want to go down in history as a president who didn't follow the law. You get the point because it's about his legacy so and you must also understand the nature of the man you know when he talks you actually have a sense that this man is looking into the good of us that he's the type of person I, in my view who are always giving people the benefit of doubt now sometimes people like those face these types of criticisms mm -hmm. but i think it would be naive for us to think that the president is not aware i think i've noticed for example that certain people that when their contracts are uh, have finished. They're not being renewed. Yes. So I think after two, three years, we might notice that things have changed. But what we don't want is a replacement of one set of, of cadets with another. What we want is having Malawians who love this country, patriotic Malawians who love the country. Do you find democracy frustrating? Oh, yeah. In that... It is. Sometimes there's a, a clearly right thing that you have oh, to do. Is. And if you had all the powers you could do and things would really change, but because of human rights and democracy and everything, everybody has got their right and then you, you've got your, your hands stung, stung. Do you like think this. do you think if the church was democratic, the church would survive? It wouldn't, would it? No. Do you think if God was democratic, would all be following God? I've always thought he's democratic. No. He gives you a choice within certain parameters. Limited. But this is my view about democracy. Countries like us have been forced. If you look at the countries that are democratic now, the US, the UK, and the West, they grew up West dictatorships. It's only when I tell you that when they embraced democracy. If we have embraced democracy when we are poor, it's too early. Too early. We can never get rich. Mark my words. This is you see the president who wants to do the right thing and, and he oh, can't yeah, yeah, because of yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see someone there who wants to change things. Yeah. And, oh, no. You can't do it. You need... You can't move a stone without killing ants. See, let me tell you, if we had started as democracy in 1961, you think this... Someone would have opposed it. Oh, 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 they would have wanted it built, oh, in, yeah, you get built it in, in, in Kasungu. But no, build he, it. he decided, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. So the foundations of this country were laid on dictatorship. Look at all the infrastructures in Malawi. All of them. If you look at all of them, they are pre-1994. The whole idea of having people weigh in on every decision is quite frustrating it when is. you come to think of it. it because, I, I mean, even on the most plainest of situations, someone will still always no. have a, a, a different view. No, it is. I agree with you. Um, we have to wind up. I've got a set of questions which I'd like to ask you which you can only answer yes or no. Oh, yes. All right, then. Yeah. Uh, so the first question, you just have to tell me your full name. Yeah. Sunduzwayo Madise. Uh, now I realize I've been uh, uh, pronouncing your You're name wrong. You're not the only one. It's okay. You should, have, you should have corrected me at the beginning. It's okay. It doesn't matter. It's Sunduzwayo. Sunduzwayo. Does it mean anything? Yeah. Sunduza. What does it mean? Sunduza. What is it? Sunta. Move. Pushing away. Sunduzwayo. Yeah. Sunduza. Push him Kusunda. away. Yeah, push. It was about pushing, yeah. There's a story around. Push it. this man away. Uh, yeah, it was about my father. My mother was pushing my father around. Yeah. Yeah, when she was expecting. Yeah, they used, to, they used to burden us with those names when they... Yeah, because the, uh, in, in Ngoni culture, because I'm Ngoni, the name usually has something to do with the circumstances of the birth or the things that were happening around. It. So let's start over again yeah. and forget about um, uh, pushing people away. Okay. What is your full name? Sunduzwayo <laughs> Madisi. Do you have any tattoos? No. Do you have any piercings? No. Do you have children? Yes. Have you ever shot a gun? Yes. Have you uh, cried over someone? Yes. Have you fallen in love before? Yes. Have you killed a chicken before? Yes. Have you killed a goat before? Oh, yes. Have you gotten into a fight before? Oh, yes. Have you gotten any surgeries? Yes. Have you ever been hospitalized? Not as it admitted. Okay. Have you donated blood? Yes. Do you know your blood group? Oh, I think. 
Have you ever smoked weed? No, but I knew I did. Would you smoke weed? No, I'm not so sure, but at that time I could have smoked it. Have you ever drank alcohol? Oh, is that not a question? That's a statement. Of course, yes. Do you drink alcohol? Of course, yes. Have you broken someone's heart? I think so. Have you had a crush on someone? Oh, yes. Do you have political ambitions? No. I think you'll be a politician at some point. I don't think I so. I think it's a matter of time. You grow tired of being a, a law lecturer. I love and you're one there. I love yeah, teaching. but eventually you will grow tired. Of Let me start something. Let me go and get blindfolded and then I'll stand in private. I have, I have zero people behind you. We have to wind up. What's our last song going to be? Our last song has to be by someone, I said, uh, who comes from Chileka again. Yes. Anthony Macondesa. Yes. I think I helped him in, I think, one of his first albums. Is that so? How? The same thing I did with Matafari. You remastered his music. He remastered his music. I designed his sleeves. <laughs> I designed the, the CDs, uh, and because I loved the, his, he has got a unique yes. reggae beat, yeah. and his songs usually have a lot of words. <laughs>